Studies reveal that only 2% of sales occur when parties meet for the very first time. Hi, this is Ray Stendhal, publisher of Customer Engagement Magazine, Radio and Television, and I'm so happy that I'm here with you today. Today I want to talk with you about how you can have more successful meetings with customers, especially when you're meeting them for the first time. This is a video for you if you don't have a clear structure in place for first time meetings with a customer. If you want to figure out how you can come to the meeting with being more prepared and being viewed as the expert in your field, if you want to make a better first impression, you want to think about the types of questions that you can ask a potential customer in the first meeting and really make sure you get off to the right start. You want to make sure that your first meetings are as productive as possible that really lead to either confirming the sale in that first meeting or moving to a second or third meeting where you can confirm the sale. So let's remember here, you only have one shot to make a first great impression. And it takes so much work to go through the process of acquiring a qualified lead that is marketing qualified, is sales qualified, and takes you to a, a, a sales meeting. And you want to make sure that you make the very best use of that sales meeting for their sake and for yours. And with that in mind, I want you to keep the, the following in place. So first of all, you have to be the expert. Number one, be the expert. If you're selling a product, a service, a software solution, whatever it is that you're selling, make sure that you're the expert in your marketplace relative to how problems are sorted out and the value is transferred. This means you have to be very credible. To be credible, you have to understand what's happening in the industry, the trends, the myths, the best practices, the mistakes that are being made. You need to understand what customers are trying to accomplish in general relative to the one that you're going to speak to in, in right now in this meeting. You need to understand what are some of the common strategies that people deploy to achieve a result that work, that don't work, so that you have this context for how you can connect and relate to your prospect. You need to be able to demonstrate your skills as an expert, both in terms of the ideas that you have and the strategies that you have, but also the customer wins that you have worked on in the past to get similar results that your customer is looking for. So as an expert, you really need to build mutual understanding that they need you as the expert to help sort out their problems. You are as much an industry consultant as you are somebody who is selling a product. And I really want you to embrace a consultative mindset when you work with a customer, irrespective of what it is that you sell. So number two is you need to do your research. You really need to know as much as you can about the organization based on what's publicly available, information that is being shared through their social media channels, being able to uh, do effective web searches and bring this together so that when you walk into that organization, you already have a pretty good idea of what it is that they're trying to accomplish and where they're headed so you know how your solution maps in place to help them reach that objective. You need to make sure that as you read their press releases, as you collect the information that you do, you're able to share it back to the customer, which shows them that you did your homework. Everybody's impressed when they see that somebody takes a meeting seriously and actually does their homework. And this shows respect for them and respect for you as an expert and as a professional. You need to show that you're curious. This is point number three. Be curious about how they do what it is that they do. Really understand that and then find out and ask why they do what they do. We want to know what, we want to know why, and we really want to know how. The how is the most important part because as you understand how, you can start to break apart a process and figure out how you can inject yourself in that process to make life easier. That point is super important. Understand how your customer does what they do today to get an end result so that you can begin to break it down and figure out how you can improve that process to get a better result. Some of the key questions that you want to be talking to them about is um, related to how and why is being able to, to even go further, go further and do some job shadowing and get into some specifics about how an individual does what it is that they do. Your customer will find this refreshing. They'll find it refreshing that you ask more questions and listen than do a whole lot of talking and pitching, which most people in the industry do. They will 
feel that you are acknowledging them and understanding them, which is a sign of respect. It's one of the most basic human desires that we have. So before the, you actually get into the meeting, perhaps you're setting the, 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 the meeting on the telephone, try and gather as much information as you can to help you with your research. When you get to the meeting, you want to understand and make sure you're clear, you know, why is the client taking time to meet with you today? I mean, you should have a pretty good idea about this. What are some of your client's strategic goals? What are some of the opportunities and threats that is keeping them awake at night? And I know I've used that phrase before, but it's true. If it's something that is not a burning, uh, compelling reason to involve you and engage you, then you're most likely not going to go very far. Ask yourself, how are you going to show your customer that you understand what it is that they're going through and how are you going to relate to them? What differentiates your organization? How are you distinct versus other organizations? And think, start thinking about what are some of the possible objections that somebody's going to have. Are they going to object to your price point? Are they going to object to your methodology? Are they going to object to some of your feature capabilities in your solution? What are they going to object to and how are you going to deal with those objections? How can you turn those objections around and create strategic assets out of those objections? For somebody, for example, if somebody is going to object on your price point, you can you can turn that around and say that the price the, the prices that you charge are done so in a way so that you can provide the best possible service to them in a highly customized, high touch manner. As an example, so we took a negative and we turned it around into a positive. I want you to also start to think about the types of questions that you ask in a logical sequence that takes the customer down a certain pathway. And this is really key because you see, if you want to lead somebody down a pathway and you have the right questions that are well organized, they essentially go very willingly down a pathway. And that's where the art of sales comes into play because now they reach a conclusion that you are a suitable provider to sort out their problems. And quite often asking the right kinds of questions that are questions that you already know ahead of time that they're not likely to have a very strong answer for are the ones that start to uh, bring up the pain and the challenges that they're facing. So when you are working with somebody, ask yourself or ask them <laughs> better, what are the top three things that they want to achieve right now? What do they want to achieve within the next six to 12 months? Basically, where are they headed? What are three things that are important to you and what changes do you want to see happen? Or if you want to use the Dan Sullivan question, you can say, if we were sitting here today or if we were sitting together, excuse me, three years from now or 12 months from now, having a cup of coffee, looking back on the year, what would have had to happen for you to say this was a successful year in your line of work? That's a really powerful question because what you're doing is you are future pacing. You're taking somebody out of the present, moving them into the future, looking back on the year where they're now free to be a little bit more liberal in terms of what's possible, to think a little bit outside of the box. And that gives you the ammunition that you need to be able to articulate how what you do can help them realize that goal one year. It also shows that you want to be a trusted advisor to them over a longer period of time. I like three years, actually, versus one year. But you might break that down into one year as well. And then as you pull all of this together, uh, you just want to come back and say, okay, how can I add more value to this prospect? What can I show them in the next meeting that would build more rapport and trust with them, uh, build more of a, an affinity towards our brand? Because you see, the customer is always asking, is this the right person? Is this the right solution? And is this the right company? And they keep going around and around in their mind asking those three questions. And if, unless you get the right person with the right company, with the right uh, product, right product, company, and person, you are not going to make the sale. And ultimately, in many cases, particularly in large B2B deals, you are selling to get to the next meeting, which you sell to get to the next meeting because there are long, there are longer sales cycles that you need to go through. So that's where all of this comes together. So what I want you to do is take everything that we've shared so far and start asking yourself, how can you be more effective when you show up to work with a customer in a sales environment 
and figure out how you can be more effective in understanding that customer, being able to summarize your customer's goals and requirements in a clear and articulate manner, how you can describe your solution and the benefits it delivers, the real benefits, not just the feature level benefits, but the business level benefits that you deliver that can really show an ROI. And then start to think about what are the next steps to move them down this sales process. And as you do this over and over again, you'll become a whiz at making your sales meetings much more productive for both you and your customer. I hope you enjoyed this training. And if you did, let me know in the comment section, wherever it is that you are consuming this content. And if you need some help in being able to apply this in your business, just let me know. Thanks so much.